Welcome to my database tutorial series on MySQL. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to take a complex schema and implement it in MySQL database. Um, not only we're going to implement a schema, but we're also going to populate it with the sample data. And uh, all of the code is available in the description below. Um, th this assumes that you're familiar with some of the relational database concepts like attributes, entities, normalization, foreign and primary keys. Um, so this is uh, an e-commerce database that we're going to be building. And uh, e-commerce typically, e-commerce uh, websites typically use databases for uh, three things, for transaction tracking, product catalogs, and non-product content such as information pages, blogs, and so on and so forth. So this is the, uh, uh, these are the tables and the data that we have in those tables. So the main table is customer. Um, this table will have um, information about the customer and uh, because and and its primary um, uh, uh, primary contact um, contact means uh, primary address, primary phone, primary email, and primary payment. Uh, because customers can one customer can have more than phone, one more than one email, one more than one payment address, uh, payment, and more than one address. Uh, according to the normalization principles, uh, it would be better to isolate them in separate entities, and that's what we're doing here. The, uh, we're putting uh, all of the phone, all of the email, all the payment, and all the address information in separate tables, and we're linking it back by the customer ID, back to the um, customer table by the customer ID. The um, information that we are listing uh, in the uh, linking and listing in the customer table are their primary uh, addresses, uh, primary phones, primary email, and um, primary uh, payment method methods. So the um, the status of the primary is actually indicated by either true or false uh, at each table, and we're linking the uh, the ID, the primary key for that um, contact mean, uh, into the customer customer table. The phone, email, payment, and address tables are pretty self-explanatory. Each one has a primary key, email ID, phone ID, um, payment ID, and address ID. Uh, phone has information about the phones. Uh, there's a non-required field extension uh, in case there's a, is the landline and uh, extension is needed. Um, the email uh, lists the email type. Uh, so is actually the phone. Uh, phone table, it lists the phone type. Uh, payment has um, information about the uh, credit card uh, that the customers might have. And the only thing uh, that they also have here is the uh, field for if the name of the credit card is different from the customer's name. Uh, in this case, uh, they're all blank. Uh, all customers are using their names on the cards. Uh, finally, the address. Uh, the address lists um, uh, customers' multiple addresses, if there are any. And uh, the apartment suit uh, is also non a non-required field. We further have order details um, that contains details about the um, uh, uh, details about the order, the payment, the ship date, ship method, and so on and so forth. And the product catalog. Now, how do we tie these two together? So if you think about the process uh, of how do you buy on Amazon, you take, pro you select products and you place them in the cart. And once your cart is uh, full with different products uh, and you're ready to order, you hit the button, uh, check out, and you're ordering it. And this is how uh, I tied the uh, product catalog cart and order together. So uh, product catalog lists products that are uh, that are also tied to the cart ID. So cart ID might have uh, multiple products uh, and they're linked by um, product ID to the product table, product catalog table. And uh, each cart ID 
uh, only one cart ID with multiple products is going to be linked to the order ID. And that cart ID is actually what's going to be uh, inside the order. All right. Now, uh, we are going to be using MySQL. And first thing first, let's check that the uh, MySQL is running. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you can check that by going into services, uh, scrolling down to um, MySQL. And yes, it's running. If it's not, then you need to right click and click on start and have it um, have it up and running. For Mac users, uh, you will need to go to the top left corner, click on the Apple logo and system preferences. And from there, you will see the MySQL um, icon, which will uh, which will also tell you whether your server is running or not. All right. Next thing, um, we're gonna we're gonna use MySQL Workbench. Uh, it's a what you see is what you get uh, tool that makes it easier uh, for MySQL development. And um, the way you once your server is running, you need to create a connection from MySQL Workbench to your server. And the way you do it, you click you go here and click on the plus sign. And this will help you create connection. All you need to do here really is to provide the connection name. Uh, you know, something self-documenting typically could be schema name, um, a name similar to the schema that you're um, launching. Uh, so, for example, e-commerce. Uh, the host name is the 127001 IP. That's the uh, IP, uh, that's the local host or IP address for, um, for your own computer. And that's uh, the same for every computer in the world. Uh, you can then test the connection. And you need to enter the password that you created when you were installing MySQL. Okay, the connection was successful. And uh, from there, we can just click OK to create it. I'm going to click Cancel because I already have it created. Um, and double click on existing one. All right, so first thing first, we need to create the uh, schema. We need to build a schema for. Um, for our database. So I already have the code uh, ready, so I'm just going to walk through it. So the first three lines basically check whether uh, the schema exists. Uh, I've created this database on my uh, computer before, so naturally it's already there. And if I'm going to try to run it the second time, it'll give me a duplication error. So um, basically it's going to check uh, if the e-commerce schema exists, which it does right now, and then it's going to drop it. Then it's going to create a new one and going to use that uh, for our uh, development purposes. So the first uh, table is customer, like I mentioned, and uh, those are the fields in it. Um, customer ID, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, and then the primary uh, contact information methods. So uh, customer ID is going to be our primary key. It's an integer. Uh, first name are of the uh, varchar type, and they're not null, meaning that uh, customer cannot leave them blank. Uh, it will not let it commit, and uh, it will not let it save the uh, record unless uh, those two are filled. Same with the date of birth, but uh, to be realistic, in uh, um, in uh, e-commerce websites, uh, typically that's not a typical field. Uh, usually, um, companies might get that from some other sources. Uh, that type of information because it's considered a PII. But I included I included date of birth here for uh, for informational purposes. Uh, gender, uh, a single character, uh, M or F, uh, and then primary uh, contact means address, phone email and primary payment. Now notice that those are all foreign keys. If you remember, um, those are uh, the keys that are linking the customer table, customer record to the um, appropriate uh, table that maintains multiple phones or multiple emails or multiple payments. Uh, in this case, I'm not listing them as foreign keys yet. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you in a second. But basically, the reason I'm not listing them uh, as foreign keys is because uh, the table address, when this table is created, when the customer table is created, the table address, phone, email, and payment are, have not been created yet. So for now, I'm creating placeholders, and once I create those tables, 
I will um, update the customer table uh, and make them uh, foreign keys. So let's look at the uh, next table and it will make sense. So the next table is the phone table, this one. So here I am creating a phone ID, customer ID, which I can create as a foreign key and I'm registering it below. If you see it, um, foreign key, customer ID, this one, references a table customer and uh, the column called customer ID in that table. On delete cascade. Uh, on delete cascade option basically gives me um, um, uh, deletes the uh, children record uh, if the parent is deleted. So in case I'm going to delete a customer with this customer ID, every record in the phone that that is linked to that customer ID will be deleted as well. And now that I have created the phone, I have the phone ID, um, which I now can link to the primary phone as a primary key. And this is what I'm doing here. Alter table, customer, add foreign key, primary phone, and that key will reference phone table, uh, phone ID column in the phone table. And again, on delete cascade. Same thing with the uh, table email. Um, I'm creating foreign key for customer ID first because it's been created. And then I'm altering customer table with the uh, email ID. Uh, same option on delete cascade. Same, uh, same thing with the payment table. Um, Notice also that I'm listing the um, Boolean field at the end, primary phone, primary email, uh, primary address, uh, and primary payment at the end of each, each of those tables, because uh, that will indicate whether the, uh, whether the, the uh, record is, uh, whether this phone or address are, is, is a primary one and therefore should be linked to the, uh, to the main table. Okay. Uh, our next table is order details. Order details table um, is right here. So order details table will be linked to the, uh, first of all, it's going to be linked to the customer table uh, to list the customer. It has its own uh, primary key, order ID. And then it will uh, link to the card table. Um, other information it's going to list is going to be uh, 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 payments, uh, ship dates, and fulfillment dates, you know, cancellation date and return date if there are any. So let's look at the table cart. Uh, table cart has, uh, uh, it, it's linked to the order table, it's linked to the product table. And the product table has not been created yet, so we are listing it just as a placeholder. Um, but we are linking it to the order table and again on delete cascade option. Uh, once it's created, we can actually add uh, the cart ID, uh, reference cart ID back to the um, back to this table from the uh, order details table. Alter table order details, add foreign key, uh, cart ID, references cart ID on delete cascade. And uh, finally, we're creating the uh, product catalog. So product catalog lists some of the uh, 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 information about the product, product name, vendor ID, Manufacturer ID, color ID, size ID, unit ID, price per unit, and weight per unit. Now, um, all of these, um, all of this, all of these uh, uh, columns are actually supposed to be uh, primary keys for some other tables, like color table, you know, color decode table, or size decode table, unit decode table, manufacturer table, and vendor table. Uh, for the purposes of simplicity, I did not list them, but uh, it would be the same, uh, same, you know, if you would like to continue and uh, develop it a little further, you can create those tables and then alter the product catalog table um, to have those as foreign keys uh, to your new tables. But just for the purposes of simplicity, I decided to leave them as is, so I'm not going to be converting those into keys because, um, foreign keys, because uh, uh, I will not be creating tables for them in this demo. Uh, and finally, once it's created, uh, I have the product ID and I'm linking cart uh, table uh, as a foreign key to the product ID in the product catalog. Okay, I'm going to run it. Okay, no errors. Great. Uh, 